With the Planet Fitness Black Card, you don't just get a great workout, you get a great perk out because your membership is packed with perks. Join for just $1 down and $24.99 a month. Join the Judgment Free Zone today. Deal ends Thursday, August 10th. See Home Club for details. This is a conspiracy. That's what this is. Just begging to course its way through your veins. Let's just for a moment speculate, shall we? You're into comic books, aren't you? I'm a nerd. But you do like comic books. Comic books aren't just for sad nerds anymore. Objection, calls for speculation, move to strike. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. You think we need one more? You think we need one more? All right, we'll get one more. Hello and welcome to Spectales, a comic book podcast, episode six. That's right. We made it. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. If this is your first time, Spectales is a comic book podcast that we go over chasing spec, chasing comic books. We tell tales. Uh, today, we actually have a special guest on who's going to help us with a tale, uh, Jason from Certified Comic Shop. Jason, how's it going? It is going amazing now that I'm here. Thank you so much for having me on the show today, guys. Absolutely. Uh, Hey, Zeus, how are you today? I'm doing good, man. Getting ready for this trip tomorrow. So very, very excited, finally. Oh, you're going to have to fill us in on that. No, I'm just going to keep it cryptic. I like to be mysterious. Oh, cool. All right. Are there comics involved? (laughs) Yes, there's a lot of comics involved. Oh, shoot. All right. Well, maybe next week we'll get it on the (laughs) the next round. All right. Well, let's uh, let's jump in real quick to Jason. Jason, so you are with Certified Comic Shop. That is your that is your website. That is your handle. Uh, You've been doing it for five years, five years now, man. uh, Jake, it's it's my everything. It's It's your life. it's, It's my. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Certified comic dot shop is where you'll find the website. Uh, I'm going to only going to say that like 18 times so far. Tell us more. What, uh, what is Certified yeah, comic so, shop? so about, Oh God, it's coming up on five years now, which is crazy to think about five years ago. I was having uh, a midlife crisis. Okay. I wasn't having a midlife <laughs> crisis. I, I came to the realization that, Due to my age and my situation that I was really facing like my very last chance to make something out of nothing. Okay. Okay. It was totally a midlife crisis. Um, (laughs) It's like, I had these like three dreams when I was a kid, I wanted to be three things. I wanted to be a professional baseball player. I wanted to be a rock and roll star. And I wanted to have a comic shop Um, for whatever reason, uh, being a professional baseball player or being a rock star seemed way more attainable than having a comic shop. I don't know why it just did. So there I was one day about five years ago, and I'm like, I really just felt this need to do something uh, in the comic book world. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to start my own comic shop. Uh, I'm going to start an online shop. And I I set some rules about how I was going to do that. I wasn't going to be stupid uh, because I had uh, three kids at the time, and now I have four kids at the time, uh, at this time. I wasn't going to go into debt. I wasn't going to take out a loan. Um, yeah. you know, I wasn't going to put, you know, my, my day job at risk. I was just going to kind of bootstrap myself to building out this online, uh, website where you could buy comic books. And I was going to focus solely on graded comic books. Cause that'd be a little bit easier for me to manage. I was trying to do like something crazy, like weekly new comic books or back issues or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just started slowly, uh, selling off what I had left in my comic collection, uh, because over the years, you know, like I'm sure most of us have, we've gone through phases of comic collecting. We've sold off big chunks or big boxes worth, but I still had some left. Uh, so I just started selling those off and that's how I funded my website. And that's how I got going. And here we are five years later, almost uh, still cranking along and uh, happy to say that, you know, I've got a pretty kick ass website. That's just my opinion. I don't know if anyone else's <laughs> opinion. Uh, sell a bunch of great comics and uh, get to uh, spend some time talking with friends like this. So it's just like, you know, everything I would have hoped for back when I was in the throes of like, what am I going to do with myself uh, now that I'm in my mid 40s? Uh, I feel like I made the right choice. Nice. Well, I, I want to tell you something that I, I, you know, you're not asking for a plug, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. So <laughs> I've been in and out of comics for, for years now. And uh, last November, I'll call it, I came back to comics. Mm-hmm. I came back to collecting, I should say. So I've always kind of gone in and out of reading. And I came back to reading in 2019-ish somewhere in that ballpark, right around the beginning of something is killing the children conveniently yeah. enough. And, uh, and then, 
so I was collecting all of them and reading those books. And then towards November of last year, I was like, you know, I think I want to start buying more books, more of the, you know, uh, the graded books and things like that. But I got to say, I didn't know jack squat about collecting the graded, the the slabs. I owned one slab at the time that I mm-hmm. purchased way back in like 2009. Uh, but I just didn't know a lot. And I when I started Googling to find out more information, your blog is what I found. Uh, And this was, you know, way back, you know, I had no idea who you were or your website. And it was just your blog had so much good information on it, just in terms of, you know, how to buy, what to look for. You know, you were giving your experience in there. And I, you know, I was consuming it just every single day I was coming to the the site. And the thing was, is, you know, I was looking to, to, to buy and I was also... So I was always looking through, you know, what you guys had on your site. And and so anyway, I want to say one, thank you for sharing all that knowledge. That was incredibly helpful, especially early on as I was trying to develop myself as, as a collector. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm still doing that. But uh, your site was incredibly helpful. And I want to say I didn't even know at the time. I probably just didn't dig deep enough. You've had a podcast. Yeah. Uh, and and I went back and I listened to the first episode and I listened to the most recent episode and the podcast is fantastic. I thoroughly enjoy it. I think there's lots of good information and now I have to go back and you know, listen to the other 18 episodes you've got. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Jake, for all that. That's so nice of you to say. Um, you know, it's funny and this is a story I tell a lot. So when I first started the shop, um, again, I was only going to sell graded comics and like you... I only had one graded comic to my name. All the rest <laughs> of my comics were, um, uh, you know, ungraded. So there's a little bit of a process there. Hey, I'm going to start a comic shop that sells graded comics. Now, where where can I get some graded comics? <laughs> <and stuff? laughs> you know, great business plan. So as I'm waiting for these comics to be graded, which is hilarious to think about now, as like we're looking at turnaround times on CGC, uh, you know, for modern comics just came back under 100 days, 100 business days. But wow. back when I first started submitting to CGC five years ago, uh, modern turnaround times was 20 days, which uh, seemed like a lifetime back then. Yeah. And it, see, it did. So I would pay for fast track so I could have it back in 10 days. I can't imagine. Uh, a world where I could get a comic back greater than 10 days now. So as I was doing that, as I was waiting those miserable 10 days for my comics to come back graded, um, I had a lot of time on my hands to write a lot of blog content. And you know what I always kind of went out of the way to say is like, I I'm not claiming to know everything about this, but I know what I know and I'm willing to share what I know because I know there's going to be somebody like me six months later or a year later, or three years later, who's like, hey, I think I want to do something in the comic book biz. And they're going to turn to Google to try to find, you know, to, to some of those articles, some of that educational content to figure out how to do it. And I'm like, if I can just leave a little bit of a trail that somebody oh. can follow uh, to help get them up to speed, then I am uh, doing a service to the community, I hope. My only, like, like, not shame is it shame it's not shame uh is that i i this is going to sound so douchey <laughs> i'm so i'm so busy now <laughs> I don't have time to write well-written blogs. <laughs> so it's like if you go through the if you go through the go through the blog roll, you know I'm too busy selling comics. Um, I've had four orders come in since we started recording. Sorry, um, I, I've been so busy selling. I don't have time to write that. So you go through the blog roll, and it's just like it just drops off the cliff. And that's exactly what happened with the podcast too. I tried to be consistent with it. And uh, again, it got too busy to keep up with uh, and it just fell off a cliff. Although the podcast is back up and running with weekly new episodes, thanks to a brand new format uh, of the show, which makes it way easier for me to produce. So podcast is back, not blogging nearly enough. My YouTube channel is full of tumbleweeds, uh, but the shop (laughs) is jamming. Well, fantastic. And I will say the community is better for it. So, uh, you know, but you can only spread yourself so thin. But yeah. uh, as somebody who came into the world uh, not knowing a damn thing, I pretended like I knew stuff because of what I read on your, on your website. <laughs> it's education, my man. <laughs> it works no matter how old we are. Somebody exactly. else says it, you repeat it, you seem smart. Yeah, exactly. I certainly didn't give you credit at the time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to admit it at least. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so uh, 
So, I, Jason, I'm not sure if you're familiar. I'll kind of go over real quick. And for those listening, what we are going to talk about today and what the what the show is going to entail. We always like to start off, whether it's with a guest or whether it's just Jesus and I, we like to start off with what we purchased recently. Your most recent purchase that you feel like talking about. Um, I'll go. Jesus will go. You'll go or whatever order we want. Yes. And then after we finish that, we're going to get into a grail tale or a comic book story. Uh, one that, uh, Jason, you'll be providing for us in this no, thank you i'm i'm, uh, I'm honored yeah i know we that's that's the whole goal the the thing that we tend to say uh, maybe we don't say it enough is every comic book has a story and so does every collector so we're here to kind of tell those tales um and then after we get through the tale we'll co- kind of close the episode out with a book that you're specking on another big part of what we do is speculate on what comic books are going to hit the market or you know blow up or something like that and you know most of the time it, it Maybe it seems like voodoo or magic or some kind, but, you know, there's a way to predict it. And, you know, occasionally we're right. So uh, we just like to kind of talk about the speculation. So if you've got one of those, we'll gladly let you throw it out there. And nice. Then, then we'll wrap it up. That sounds awesome. Let's do it. I'm excited. Cool. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I, I'm going to lead the way with uh, what I purchased recently. And uh, this is an interesting story. So last week, I actually just talked about last week, I traded uh, five books to get a Hulk 181. And that was the the tale that we told last week. Uh, So one of the books that I traded away was an Avengers 48, the first Black Knight. And I wasn't exactly ready to let that book go. But when I was, you know, calculating this trade and the only way to really get the trade accomplished to get the Hulk 181 uh, was to include that book. And I just decided afterwards that I wasn't quite ready for that book to leave the collection yet. I wanted to, I wanted one in the collection. So uh, I was looking at how to get, you know, some cash, you know, put together so I could buy a book, uh, buy an Avengers 48. And I was trying to figure out what level of grade I thought that I could get in what price point. And lo and behold, uh, a, a, a book I had listed last week. And uh, now this is shameful because it's through a competitor of yours, I suppose. I don't know. Uh, I, I had listed a book on Elite uh, on Instagram. Yeah. I had them throw it up and they, uh, you know, the, the Elite can be hit and miss. You know, you post books and sometimes they'll they'll sell within minutes and sometimes they, they don't sell. And strangely enough, I had, I had, had a book listed with them a week ago. I mean, seriously, like a, a full week. And never heard anything, and usually that's not a great sign when it comes to books on there. And then suddenly, literally yesterday, while I'm looking at eBay, I get a message from a lead on Instagram saying, hey, somebody claimed your book. It's like, what? <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody claimed it a week later? All right, sounds good to me. So I sold a book, and suddenly now I had money in my PayPal account. And I was like, wow, I think the comic book gods really want me to get this book. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I ended up getting a, a raw copy of Avengers 48 found it on eBay. Uh, I had worked with the seller, you know, him and I were kind of going back and forth on pricing and we came to a good agreement and by I, the, the shipping label was already printed and ready to go uh, last night. So it all kind of happened pretty quick, but ultimately uh, I, I took it as a sign that that book randomly sold a week later, right when I was considering how am I going to get the money to afford a Avengers forty eight. So I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna argue with the gods of of comics. That's a great story, man. Uh, I guess uh, I'll go next on what I recently picked up, and, and this is going to also lead into yours, Jason, because I have a question for you about this. So recently, uh, you know, I, I spec different than, than Jake. Uh, I don't ever buy slabs. I usually buy raw books only. And then I get them slab if I want to. If not, I just keep them uh, raw for ever or whenever I need to get them slab. Um, but uh, I wanted to try something different um, just based on some of the things that I'm learning from Jake or how he does some things just to see how it might work out. So I wanted to do something different and I bought a slab. So I'm going to show the book and I'm going to talk about it. I'll show it to you guys and I'm going to talk about it for the podcast. I bought this book that we talked about last week as well. Off, I think off podcast which is vengeance number one i like the cover jake doesn't like the cover this is the first appearance of uh miss america uh the new miss america america chavez who has been cast already and is going to be part of uh what is it dr strange the multiverse of madness 
Uh, yeah. So I, right? That's what it's called. In the, yeah. In the, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of her powers is punching holes into alternate realities and alternate universes. So uh, I feel she's going to have a big, a big role. I think there's also talk about doing a Disney Plus show. So I got it. I got it under what it's what it's going on GPA. Uh, and I never buy like this. This is I was telling Jake this is the biggest purchase, the most expensive purchase I made for a comic book is this book right here, the nine point six. So I, I targeted nine point six specifically for the same reason. The nine point eights are probably double right yeah. now, or close to double. Uh, and I also uh, purchased another raw one as well. So I'm kind of. I, 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 I'm not a. I'm not gonna say that I. I love the cover. I know a lot of people like that cover. I will say, that is a nice looking copy of that book. I, that's you know nine point six. It looks great. It presents really really well, and ultimately there's nothing wrong with that spec. I think that's a great pickup. Uh, I'm kind of jealous of that book now. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I've always liked it. I've always liked that cover. It's like a painting of Magneto. It just looks. Yeah. Just it's 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 a Del Otto cover. It's pretty sweet yeah. if you're a Del Otto yeah. fan. Yeah. Um, so my question for you, Jason, is I've never in, in all the conversations we've had asked you one like how do you spec? I guess, and two uh, because you, you mentioned that in your podcast that you saw an opportunity to buy raw clean and press lab. And then there was a margin there for you to make money. Right. Yep. Well, how, how do you target those books? Like, is it just, well, it's, it's changed the way I used to do it. Uh, used to be a lot more thoughtful. Uh, again, had, <laughs> had a little more time on my hands. <laughs> now the way I do it, no. And here's, here's the beauty about building out your own web platform. It used to be, I have to, I had to go hunting, right. Mm-hmm. I had to be the hunter gatherer. Uh, now it comes to me. Uh, I get so many people wanting to sell their comics, uh, reaching out to me through the website that I can, t- I typically get everything I need just by buying people's stuff mm-hmm. uh, yeah. that way. Nice. Um, so, yeah, so that's pretty cool. And which actually ties into uh, what I bought uh, my most recent purchases. If you're ready to move on to that. Yeah, let's let's do it. Yeah. So I don't, I'm not an active collector. So I, I, I need to make that distinction. Um, when I started the shop, I flipped a mental switch to go from comic collector to comic seller. I knew that I could not do both. Uh, I wanted to treat this seriously, treat it like a business. And if I was spending money that the shop was making to buy things that I was going to put on a shelf to look really nice, then that defeats the purpose of having a business. So anything that I do buy for myself has to be used from separate funds has to come out of the family funds. And it's a lot harder to convince my wife to be like, Hey, I'm going to spend $500 of, of our money on this comic, but not going to happen. Right. So it kind of raid me in, but I still buy things and I still have a story that ties in because the last thing that I bought was a collection um, that had six comics in it. Um, five of them were graded. One of them was raw. Uh, it was an Avengers number one. CGC 3.5. It was an Incredible Hulk 181. CGC 5.0. Giant Size X-Men 1. Signature Series signed by Stan Lee and Lynn Wine. 6.5. An X-Men 12. 5.5. Tales of Suspense 40. 6.0. And then a raw, ungraded copy of uh, Journey into Mystery 85. Wow. Here's how I bought them. Holy crap. (laughs) I get an email. (laughs) One day, as I'm the shop is tend to do, it gets emails. Uh, you can email me at Jason at certifiedcomic.shop. Anyway, I get an email from a fella saying I, he has these these books. And I do a lot of consignment business through the shop. And, and to your point, Jake, elite, great account on Instagram, great people. I never see any other seller as a competitor. Um, it's my mission to help other uh, to help comic collectors collect the comics they love. So if I don't have a comic that they love, I always want to try to help them find the person that does have it. So to me, there is no competition. It's just all big network people trying to help each other out. Anyway, I distracted myself from the story already. So I get an email uh, and I do a lot of consignment business for the shop. And just the way this guy worded his email was, I, I thought he was like, hey, I want to sell these on consignment. So I do what I normally do is I put together some prices saying, hey, here's what I would sell these at. Here's what my commission would be. Here's what your payout would be. These should be pretty fast movers because they're all obviously mega keys, right? Yeah. And he gets, he responds to the email. He's like, yeah, that's cool. Um, but I was wondering if you would just want be interested in buying them outright and skipping the consignment route. And I was like, whoa, hold on a sec. Because instantly my brain went to like, this is, 
this has got to be a scam, right? There's got to be something wonky here. And then those, those books are too big to, yeah. I mean, that's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said it right. Mega keys, like mega, mega keys. keys, mega keys. And so then I'm like, it's not a scam. This has got to be a regular good old fashioned person who needs to sell some comics. So I'm like, yeah, man, it's like, I'd be happy to, uh, to, to, you know, take a look at it, see if we can put a deal together. And I said, Hey, can we jump on like a zoom or a Google meet? So I can like see you and see the books. I'm like, I can get, you know, I can get together now if you're available. He's like, well, I'm in the magical world of the Netherlands. Uh, so it's like totally different time of day here than it is there. So I'm like, Oh, wait a second. Now I've got a guy that has these books from the Netherlands. Like what the hell's going on here? So we ended up connecting on a zoom and he's showing me the books and they're legit. I'm like, this is crazy. And then just, you know, I like to, when I talk to somebody, I like to get to know him a little bit. I'm like, Hey, you don't sound like you have a, a, a Dutch accent. You know, you're not from there. Are He's like, no, you don't believe me. He's like, you know, actually I grew up in Michigan which is crazy because I grew up in Michigan and that's where I still live. I'm like, yeah. that's nuts. And he was like, you know, grew up about 40 miles away from me. And so we're talking and whatnot. And uh, I'm like, okay, so what, what happened next? And he's like, well, in the mid nineties, mid to late nineties, I moved to Chicago. I'm like, no kidding. I, I lived in Chicago in the mid, mid to late nineties. It's crazy. <laughs> what part of Chicago do you live in? He said, I lived in Uptown. I go, I lived in Uptown. That's nuts. I go, where around Uptown did he live? He goes, uh, he goes, Lawrence and whatever. I'm like, I lived on Lawrence and Ashland. So we were literally three blocks away from each other during the same time in the mid to late nineties. And now he lives in the Netherlands and he's trying to sell me these comic books. And I'm like, this has to be a sign. I've never seen a sign like this before. As clear as this one that says buy his comic books. Uh, and it turns out he had a very real and personable, uh, personal reason why he needed to sell them, which I'm not at liberty to share. Um, so we were able to put together like a deal, uh, on these, on these six books. Um, he sent them to me. I didn't pay him. I didn't pay him until they got here and was able to check them out. Uh, and obviously they're all great. Uh, I sent a couple in to be pressed. I had a couple more reslabbed and, uh, now they're most of them look actually four of the six have already sold, <laughs> but there's still a have couple. Of, really? Yeah. That's the amazing. giant size X-Men and the journey into mystery 85 are still available, but everything yeah. else has sold. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so great. We've got all of the, what we purchased recently. Hey, Zeus, me and you are going to have to talk off, uh, off air about yours. I am intrigued to know <laughs> the story behind it. Maybe that's for another episode. Uh, but Jason, the floor is yours to tell a grail tale, spec tale, however you want to call it. If it's a trade tale, whatever, but you said you had the perfect one. So now I'm, I'm going to leave it over to you. Well, thank you very much for that. Uh, we're going to jump into the old Wayback Machine, and we're going to revisit 14-year-old Jason. Uh, okay. For my, this would be my very first ever Grail tale. So I oh, got wow. into collecting comic books when I was, yeah, I, or was introduced to comics like when I was around six years old. Um, so started out pretty young. Uh, as I got older, I started to get into more, you know, mature things like Star Wars action figures and gi joe action figures uh but i still you know d dabbled in comics a little bit but then as i got even older as i approached my teenage years things like sports and girls became way more important uh than like gi joes so i had a friend and my friend one day boasted to me that he found under his dad's bed uh some magazines some comic book hey. magazines. Get your head out of the gutter. Uh, some you, comic book magazines. You did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a setup in the biz. Uh, so he said, this kid says to me, he's like, I, under my dad's bed, I found seven copies of Journey into Mystery 83, all minty fresh. And I said, bullshit. No, you didn't. So 14 years old, I'm about to turn 48. So we're talking 34 years ago. We're talking 1986 ish, 1986, 87. Um, and so, yes, and I'm telling bullshit, right? There's no way. There's no way. Well, I mean, Fresh, no, those don't exist, right? They're not so, they're the, they're the reprints from 66 or whatever year that was. So he shows me one one day. And he's like, I've got more where this came from. <laughs> I'm like you, you, and it's like, and it is Journey to Mystery '83. It's the first appearance of Thor. I'm staring at it. I'm like, I gotta have one of these. 
And so this actually turns into a trade tale at the same time. So he says, he's like, you really don't play with all those GI Joes anymore. Do you? And now I should, the part I should say about GI Joes is like my mom spoiled me with every single GI Joe action figure, every single oh, vehicle, man. every single, everything. The only thing I didn't have from 1982 to 1985 was the USS flag. I literally had like everything else. But again, now I'm 14. I'm like, I'm trying to impress girls. I'm trying to play sports. I got all these GI Joes that I want nothing to do with, but I still like comic books. And my man here, he's got a, a gym 83. The trade he proposes, give me all your GI Joe stuff. And I will steal one of these journey into mystery 83s from my dad. <laughs> and I will give it to you, sir. Oh, um, oh <laughs> now, now 14 year old Jason, he doesn't care about theft. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care. He, he doesn't understand the hundreds of thousands of dollars that his mother spent on buying him G.I. Joe toys to make her little boy happy uh, in his uh, young life. So I agreed to that deal. So I go, in, I go any, into the book. As any human would. Yes. Of course you trade would. all the G.I. Joes in the world for Journey of Mystery 83. This book is worth thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars, I say. Um, so I start boxing up all my GI Joes. My mom's not home, so I don't have to worry about getting caught. Uh, and I'm like, you know, future Jason's problem, by the way, for explaining to, you know, his mom where all the GI Joes went. But they were just in the basement. So it's not like I was actively playing with them. So anyway, I get, we make the trade. I take the deal. I've got the book. I'm so pumped up. Get on my bike. Ride down like the two miles to Dave's comic shop in downtown Royal Oak, Michigan, if anyone uh from the areas listening, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hasn't been there for decades. But if you grew up in Royal Oak in the 80s, you know Dave's Comic Shop. And uh, I'm, I basically went in there, put my thing down, said, how many thousands of dollars are you going to give me for this? And he's like, I'll give you 50 bucks. 50 I'm like, bucks? no, 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 sir. This is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Dave, Mr. Comic Shop owner. You probably don't realize that this is the first appearance of the Mighty Thor in Journey into Mystery 83. And he said, uh, excuse me, son, you probably don't realize that you have the Golden Apple record reprint, not a first edition <laughs> of Journey into Mystery 83. Oh, Dave, And my heart cell fell to my feet. I had been hoodwinked. I had been hornswoggled. I had been manipulated. I had been taken for a fool. And so I did what any other 14-year-old boy would do in that instance, took the $50, <laughs> I rode my bike home, <laughs> and I told on my so-called friend <laughs> to my mother, <laughs> and on the bike ride home, I am conjugating the story about how I was tricked, how I was bamboozled by this rapscallion, and he made me do it. I didn't want to do it. He made me do it, because I was afraid I was going to get in so much trouble for giving away all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, and then when she's like, oh, well, we're going over to his house right now and we're going to talk to his parents. And then I'm like, oh, no, no, I can't. No, we can't do that. We don't want to you know, do that. We got a man, man. Man code says that I can't bring my mom <laughs> to this. Just call, to this his, just call his dad just call to this kid's house. Right. So, oh, I, yeah. Geez. And plus, I didn't have the book anymore anyway. Because I oh. sold it. <laughs> so, which is the best part. You sold the $50 book and you still want your GI Joe's back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't necessarily the most logical child in the world. So, of course, the irony of all the ironies is, had I never made that trade and just kept my G.I. Joes, I would be, like, have a fortune's worth of G.I. Joes. The, of course, the other irony is, if I would have just held on to that Golden Apple record reprint, and that itself is worth, it's hundreds, still worth money. hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I'm not well, going to say hundreds of thousands of dollars. Out? It was, was just like 60, 66, 66, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's not so, like it... Oh my God! Wait, so, so yeah. hold on. What's the ending? How did it? How did it end? That, that was the end. As I sold the book, I cried to my mom, uh, <laughs> tried then, not to get in trouble. And then you just, you know, said, "No, mom, bro code. We can't go." Yeah, over it's like we can't here. go over there. We can't do that. Wait, um, so, so many questions. Okay, so yeah. did his dad think that he had? Journey to Mystery 83. Like, See, did he think that he had those? No, I think that the son knew they were reprints. And bamboozled you. Yeah, and I think his dad. I I don't think a fourteen-year-old is still alive. Yeah, 
I think his dad also knew they were reprints. Um, I, yeah, I don't think I don't think any I don't think on their side there was any like, hey, these are actual first prints. I think I was taken for a fool. Um, oh, man. It wouldn't be the first time, <laughs> but but and it wasn't the last time either. <laughs> what, my my question too on that is they might not, but why were they under the 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 bed? Or that's just a story he said. And, you know. I, I, it could be he was. That's just the story. Okay. But I said that's exactly. I found these. I was rooting around under my dad's bed looking for you know dirty magazines. But I found Journey into Mystery instead. This is even better. You know. Wait, did you confront your friend about it? Did he know? No, that was actually after that. It was like the last time that we ever spoke to each other. <laughs> yeah, because that son of a bitch got your G. I got, oh my god! There he, there he is. He playing with snow job and alpine and ripcord and stalker and duke and i'm sitting there i got my 50 dollars, which is great but what it's gonna buy me some slurpees and some candy and then it's gone oh, man. a few comic books and he gets like the joy he probably kept him for he probably so he probably made a thousand dollars off my gi joes the best yeah. part is, is no mr comic guy this is the first appearance of Thor you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. You, you must be really mistaken. You probably don't understand because this is a really old and rare comic. <laughs> this you is the first appearance of the Mighty Thor. You've never seen this before, but you owe me thousands of dollars right now. <laughs> so, I'm 14, okay, so, so you have to pay me in cash. 14-year-old you, your first instinct when you got a journey into what you thought was an authentic journey into mystery. Was, was to, to take it and sell it. Yep. Take it and sell it. But you didn't even have it for five minutes. You and you were just like, nope, I'm going to get the money. Yep. What were you going to tell your mom about the thousands of dollars that you had? I don't know. Again, you know, you're 14. You don't play the tape out. You just kind of live by the stimulus of the world that's around you. You don't think about how these things are going to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We make some weird decisions when we're younger. Um, and that was certainly one of the weirdest but oh but that's a fun story it's all like right. i said it's my first grail tale and it did not have a happy ending at all no that was a happy ending for me that's the <laughs> that's that might be my favorite tale told so far well, you know at least 34 years later i can sit here and i can laugh at it and you know oh. just chalk it up to capricious youth but to your point it's like it's like who knows the thoughts that are going through my head i mean i know i gotta try to remember that because my kids are getting older you know, my oldest one is 10. I've got a 10, 8, 5, and 3 right now. And so pretty soon, they're going to be getting into those stages where they're going to make really terrible decisions. So hopefully I can remember like, hey, remember the things that you did back when you were your yeah, age? Let's not, be, let's not be too hard on uh, some of the crazy things that your own kids do. Okay, man. What a hell of a story. Thank you for sharing that, Jason. That, uh, like I said, that I think that might be my favorite tale told uh, thus far. Definitely my favorite over any of the tales I've told myself. Uh, so, uh, Jason, the next thing, as I said, that we'll go into sort of to close this whole thing out is uh, let, we're going to throw out a spec, uh, something that either, and, and in your case, it'll be interesting because you approach the situation a little bit different, differently than Jesus and I, but I think it still works the same way. I know you, you want to, you'll sell any, you know, maybe any book that, that comes your way, but are yep. there books that you are specifically looking at where you think the margin could improve or something, you know, for your particular case uh, and Jesus and I might throw out a couple of specs that, uh, something sleepers or something that uh, that uh, the collectors out there might want to look to get to get pretty cheap now that they might want to hold for later. Yeah. So here's this is a, this is kind of a weird one. This is kind of a weird one because it's already uh, what do we call it? Warming the blanket. What, the warm, warm burrito. Warm blanket. Looks warm burrito. Say, people need a warm burrito before they're willing to buy. <laughs> there you go. So all right. So this probably burrito. falls under that category. It's not a burrito. It's a blanket. Um, where am I? Are you guys Star Wars fans? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I figured you were. I thought you were. Uh, I, the, the thought struck me the other day, and this is, this is like speculation of the ultimate speculation. This is like <laughs> bordering on fan fiction. Probably not going to happen. Oh, but, you know, we call, we call these comic book conspiracy theories. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is a Star Wars related one. Uh, have you guys been watching Bad Batch at all? Yeah. Yep. Uh, this is, it's, it, 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 spoilers because it, it, the last uh, last episode of the season did just air, and at the end of the last episode, uh, we see a scene take place on uh, Mount Tantus, 
which is uh, a location from the Heir to the Empire uh, novelization from uh, Timothy Zahn back in 1991. Now, we already know Thrawn is coming back. Uh, mm-hmm. He's been back in Star Wars Rebels, and now he's coming to live action in the Ahsoka series. So the Heir to the Empire comic has already been seen, has gotten that generous dose of spec activity. Market prices have gone on that quite a bit. Uh, I just got one in here at the shop 9.0. Uh, and I've got another one that's at CGC, but that's not why I'm saying that. I am now convinced that Lucasfilm is going to make the Heir to the Empire trilogy canon. Currently, oh. it's Legends, but the fact that Thrawn's already back, there's nothing in the current canon that would eliminate anything that happened into the Heir to the Empire trilogy. So okay. I am convinced, probably wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I am convinced that they are going to bring Heir to the Empire into canon because of what I don't want to say went wrong, but what we got in the sequel trilogy of Star Wars movies. We never got that Han, Luke, and Leia together again. They were separated the whole time, people died. It wasn't what me as a classic Star Wars fan who saw Star Wars in the movie theater as a five-year-old child, it's not what I wanted to see. I enjoyed the movies for what they were, but I wanted Han, Leia, and Luke together on an adventure. Because of that, I have a feeling, and because of the way they produce some of the TV shows lately on Disney+, Plus, I have a feeling that they're trying to make some goodwill with that core fan base. And the only way now you're going to get Han, Luke, and Leia back together is A, by recasting them as younger people, or by saying, hey, remember the story that we all loved in the early 90s because it was the only Star Wars that existed? Yep. Well, guess what? We just made it canon as we introduced these elements into the Ahsoka series and everything else as it goes forward. So my way out there spec is, even though Heir to the Empire number one, Dark Horse, is already hot as you know what, it's going to get hotter when Ahsoka comes out. But if it ever does become retroactively can and then i think it will be even hotter of hotter nice. of the hotness that but, great spec star wars spec we haven't had star wars spec on the show yet so that's a that's a good one and i completely agree with you as far as the whole casting and how they would have to handle the situation and we saw how that worked with solo mm-hmm. um and while i didn't hate the casting for solo ultimately i will i think everybody will admit it didn't work yeah. So it just didn't, it, I didn't mind it, but for some reason, the fan, it just didn't seem like the fan base took to the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was a tough movie. And as we get into the Star Wars corner here, we don't need to go there. It, it was just one of those movies where it's like, why are we making it? Is this a story that needs to be told? Um, or is, is Han better off just like, he's just Han and Solo, man. Yeah. yeah. You know, he's- and you don't need to know how he got his blaster or how he got his name or how he met Chewbacca. It's just that you don't need to. It's better off just not knowing. Okay. Hey, Zeus, what, uh, what spec you got for us today? Well, based on what I recently purchased, I'm just going to go with those three. Three of them is Vengeance 1, already cast, Warm Blanket, uh, Kamala Khan, which is Marvel Point One, right? I think that's what it's called. Yep. Marvel Now Point One, which is also notoriously hard to get in a high grade. And then uh, the other one, which is... I think it's another Marvel Now point one. I don't know what it's called or Marvel Now with the one with this uh, Sam Alexander as the as the new Nova. That's, that's the new Nova. Called. Yeah, I think the new Nova. Go with the new Nova. I mean, all these all these new characters, man, of, of these older characters. I, I'm not saying that they're not going to use the old Nova. I'm pretty sure they probably will, but at some point they're going to bring in some of these these newer characters. Yeah. And it's just, I mean, I feel like they're also taking a page out of the Miles Morales book on the Sony side. I know they're, they're going to do something with that eventually. Uh, so I, I'm going to be shooting for those, and that's my spec. Nice. Okay, great. Dig good it. spec. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig into the uh, comic book conspiracy theory uh, book of mine a little bit. So I'm going with Captain America 272. This is the first vermin. Now, it has an epic Mike Zek cover. I love the cover. Uh, look it up immediately. It is it is glorious. It's got Cap sitting on there. It looks like he's just. It, it looks like he's dead. He is completely covered in rodents. Um, gorgeous. Now here's why I like the book. So uh, they have cast. They have horribly cast, but we don't need to go into that. Uh, Craven the Hunter for his own solo film. 
Uh, I am not a huge fan of the the casting in this particular case. Nothing against the actor himself. I just don't think he's not what I envisioned. And in my opinion, if Sony was trying to play nice with Disney to to try and you know get a little bit of crossover stuff going with uh, the Spider Man stuff, they would have not cast somebody who's already been in the MCU and died. So. <laughs> So uh, it seems strange that they would do that. But in this particular case, uh, Craven the Hunter has, you know, a very specific style to the character. Uh, everybody knows him from Craven's Last Hunt. Vermin is the antagonist in, in many ways, where Craven is acting as Spider-Man in, those, in that uh, storyline. And he is trying to defeat who he believes was the the one character that um, uh, that that I, I guess defeated Spider Man or Spider Man needed Captain America's help to defeat Vermin. Uh, so in Captain America two seventy two, that is Captain America versus Vermin. Then there is a Captain America Spider Man team up, and I. I'm I'm lost on what the exact number that is, but it is a team up with Captain America. It's got the ugliest cover in the world. Uh, it is it's a it's a full on photo. It is not a it is not drawn. It is not done by an artist. They took a photo of a dude in a Captain America suit and a dude in a Spider Man suit to create the world's worst Marvel comic <laughs> cover ever. Uh, and and in that comic book, it takes Captain America and Spider Man to defeat Vermin. Well, in Craven's Last Hunt. Uh, they, he believes if he can defeat Vermin by himself, that makes him better than Spider-Man and ultimately, uh, a, 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 you know, a superhero, I suppose. And so here's why I'm specking. They need to make Craven a, they, he's, he's an anti-hero, right? The movie is about, you know, the way that they're uh, going with Venom, right? They're making these characters anti-heroes. You have to root for him a little bit. And I was trying to think of what other character could be a antagonist to Craven in a film where Craven's already not a great human, not a great person. He's a villain. Uh, but who was worse? Vermin. Uh, he had a, he had dealings with Vermin. I, I love the storyline with him and Vermin. Uh, I don't necessarily know that they're going to actually do the uh, Craven's last hunt storyline. I don't think they'll go down that road, but I also don't think Sony has ever been so true to, <laughs> to comic books that they, they adhere to, you know, the plots as they were anyway. So this is, I've got no basis for it. I just think he's a hunter. He's going to hunt an animal of some kind. Uh, Vermin is a serial killer. Vermin is a murderer. He eats human beings, pulls them down into the sewer Horrible person, definitely worse than Craven. If you're talking about which one you do or don't want on the street, you want vermin off the street immediately. Uh, Craven has to hunt an animal, and this is the most animal-like uh, you know villain he ever faced in the comics that I'm aware of. So, all of that to say, I think I've got I own a copy of Cap, Cap 272 just because I love the cover, but I think it's a fun book to spec on, and at the very least, if you spec on it and I'm wrong. You still got a really cool cover in your collection. You know what? That um, the, the, it's Marvel Team Up 128 that you were talking about. Thank you. Ugliest cover ever. Um, I'm about to buy a copy right now, and I don't buy stuff for myself. That is glorious. I, 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 own, it. I, I, I'm t- I own it. I own it because it's the ugliest book I've ever it's seen. So bad. I gotta have one. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I have, a, I have a near mint copy that, that my my LCS basically gave to me for a dollar. He goes, I don't know anybody who wants that. Book. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to find me a nine point eight. I'm going to I'm going to get it graded. I'm going to get it pressed. I'm going to get a nine point eight new stand of that comic. And it's going to so put down a little shrine. It's going to be my only thing in my collection. <laughs> Put so, it up so, on that big giant wall behind you. That yeah. wall. It needs yeah. stuff. It needs <laughs> stuff. The one book. <laughs> 
Okay. Well, I think that's going to do it for what we've got for this evening. Uh, Jason, thank you so much for coming on. It was an absolute pleasure. Why don't you go ahead and toss out your ads real quick so that everybody can find you when they want to know more about your GI Joe collection. (laughs) Well, first off, let me say JK Seuss. Thank you both so much for inviting me on the show today and uh, for jiggling around your schedules to accommodate me. I super appreciate that. Had a ton of fun. And uh, you can always check out the Certified Comic Shop at CertifiedComic.shop. You can follow me on Instagram at Certified Comic Shop, on Twitter at Certified Comics, uh, or send me an email, Jason, at CertifiedComic.shop. And I do have a podcast. It's called Certified Comic Talk, um, where it's really geared towards comicpreneurs, which is a little term that I coined, essentially. It's like an entrepreneur, but for somebody who's trying to find their way in the world of comics, uh, always talk and shop trying to bring on new and exciting guests. Probably a couple of the people that talk to today will probably be guests on my show here in the very near future. I'm going to guess. Um, (laughs) Anyway, just to do that. So check that out on iTunes, uh, Google podcasts, anywhere you can listen to podcasts, certified comic talk. Yeah. I highly recommend everybody listening. He's a great follow on all the social. And uh, I, I just started listening to his podcast. I was catching up. I didn't know it existed. Now I do. And it's also fantastic. <laughs> Lastly, I will just one more time say, go check out his blog, especially if you are trying to learn more about the, the craft, learn more about selling, learn more about buying. There is information there for everybody. It's a great resource. Uh, don't don't overlook it. So, well, thank uh, you again. Thanks, Jason. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, we are Spec Tales Podcast. If you want to reach out to us, you can find us at Spec underscore Tales underscore Podcast. That's our Instagram handle. And if you'd like to reach out to us, we love hearing stories. We try and tell as many stories as possible. And we have a new segment called. Tales from the Internet, where we're going to be reading stories that we get either we find them on Reddit or if we get them in email, uh, anything, you know, we're here to tell the tales that uh, that's happening out there, um, you know, collecting comic books. So send it to us. We'll read it. Uh, you can email us at spectalespodcast at gmails, gmail.com. Anyway, thanks, everybody, for listening. We really do appreciate it. If you want to toss us a couple of stars or two out there on the the ratings for Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen, please do. And uh, once again, uh, thanks again for listening. Come back next time. 